I want to borrow money from you at 0% interest. And I'm going to, I'm willingly paying you back in a hundred years from now. <laughs> I mean, for astronomical totals. Billions. Billions of euros. euros. All right. So Charles and I have been talking about green finance and there's nobody uh, better able to discuss this than you, of course. So, I mean, we've been talking about it. The world is on the precipice, you know, and at this point, you can't do anything unless you pay for it. I mean, uh, China is going to put, what, $640 billion a year uh, through 2060 in order to meet all of these goals, the 2030, 2060 goals. Um, the question is, how do you do that? And additionally, just thinking about the needs of developing countries, which are moving very quickly into the internet age, the electronics age, they need electricity, they need power. What do you do with countries in Africa or India and Pakistan and Bangladesh? Are you going to tell the population, sorry, you no, cannot no, have no, no, electricity? You're going to go, what can Luxembourg do for us? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's of course a, a good question. Uh, Luxembourg being uh, the second most important investment center in the world, just after New York, and we don't have any aspirations or se ambitions. Se se second, 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 second in, most in important. Where, what happened to London? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just talking <laughs> about investment funds. But London yeah. decided yeah. to do to go. Um, as a matter of fact, when uh, London decided to go for the Brexit to uh, get out of the European Union, um, Luxembourg decided, and it was very clear from the beginning, that uh, we are not going to roll out the red carpet for uh, the experts from London. No, we decided to cooperate, to continue our good cooperation with London, because we know Luxembourg on its own cannot replace London. London will uh, remain a global financial center. Yes, whenever I want to wash money, I always go to London. I mean, I, it's just, <laughs> Luxembourg, it's a little bit difficult. It's, you know, you, anyways, so you have to thank Boris Johnson, right? In a way, yes, because uh, due to his uh, decision, after all, um, we gained uh, uh, something around uh, 80, a bit more than 80, 80, uh, different uh, insurance companies and uh, investment funds. Uh, funds. Fund management companies moved to Luxembourg. Exactly. They decided to relocate to Luxembourg because they want to stay within the European Union market, one of the strongest and largest uh, markets you have over there. And that's why they, they had to make uh, a choice and they went to Luxembourg. Well, I, I, are they paying taxes? They are paying a lot of taxes. <laughs> and, and we are so very, there are some benefits here. Yes, we are very grateful to them. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, green, green, I mean, uh, we were talking about the fact that they, they just floated a zero interest, interest bond. Several. Several. I mean, for astronomical totals. Billions. Billions yeah. of euros. I mean, how, how does that work? You know, I, I, you bar I bar I want to borrow money from you at zero percent interest, and I'm going to I'm willingly paying you back in a hundred years from now. <laughs> well, maybe not works? 100. hundred. Yeah, maybe not a hundred. How 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 is that uh, working? How did Luxembourg become the center of this? Of course, we built up uh, some expertise, combined the newly developed expertise in green finance together with uh, our reputation as an investment fund center. And so we managed to bring together people who are interested in long-term investments, but they are obviously lacking the investment opportunities, uh, for example, in Europe. And of course, in Europe, you, have, uh, you still have negative interest rates, so you are losing money. And then on the other hand, uh, you have here in China, you have a lot of very interesting long-term green projects. It's all about green development. And they are looking for uh, investors to, um, to sell their products. And that's where Luxembourg, um, as a kind of bridge, tried to bring together investors seeking for investment opportunities and issuers here from, uh, from China who well, had the project. There's, there's, give, give, there's, us, give us a, a sense. Who, who's providing the money and who is... That's, that's a very important point because most of the Europeans are now registered in Luxembourg and have offices there. Most of them now have a green mandate. 
15 percent, 12 percent, 10 percent, 20 percent. The sovereign wealth funds. Including the sovereign wealth funds. But the mandates now go way beyond sovereign wealth funds. It's not just Norway but or, or the German sovereign wealth fund, but many private, even I think uh, retirement funds exactly. now have very specific, more than mandates, it's almost a diktat. That but a it, is, isn't this yeah. going against everything that we know about Market. capital markets? Yeah. I mean, the idea that I, I put money in and I have no intention of making any money on it? I mean, no, this, I don't think I don't think I don't think it's a question of it sounds, it sounds socialist, but I don't think it's a question of not making any money, because at least in China's case, you have very specific things, projects, which the government is backing to turn certain industries green. There are many industries which are very highly polluting: steel, cement, petrochemicals, and so on. Now. There are new technologies could could be implemented that would be make it make them more efficient, reduce pollution, reduce carbon uh, emissions. I see. So some of these green bonds are actually being recycled back into technologies that are being offered, perhaps by some of the countries where right. sovereign wealth funds were involved. Right. Oh, smart. Can I didn't realize that? Can do. No. Yeah. And who, who who's the target? Who's who has gotten the biggest tranche of money so far? What about the thirty billion euros? Is that the EU? European oh, yes. Central Bank? Yes, that, that was, as a matter of fact, that was a, uh, a green bond uh, issued by uh, the European Commission uh, in the context of the so-called uh, Green Deal. I mean, the economic recovery plan that has been uh, decided by the European Union. And the European uh, Commission, together with the European Investment Bank, also located uh, in Luxembourg. So they issued last October the single largest green bond worldwide with uh, a volume of uh, roughly 20 billion euros. And that again, it was uh, uh, issued in, in Luxembourg on the so-called Luxembourg uh, Green Exchange. And if you're asking me who is, uh, who is investing, well, I mean, it's, uh, it's the usual suspects, I would say. It's uh, the pension funds, uh, it's the investment uh, banks, because they are, they are looking for that kind of uh, investment opportunities. Because there we are speaking about uh, transitional finance. Right. We have to make sure that these, um, these uh, industries are redeveloping, are reinventing themselves with a view to green development. At that point of time, they are not ready, or most of them are perhaps not ready to issue or eligible for green bonds. But still, we have to make sure that we also de develop a specific targeted financial uh, segment for these kind of industries. That's the so-called uh, uh, transitional finance, transition towards green. And uh, so there are almost, uh, I would say, endless opportunities in that, in that context. Okay, so uh, let's get the, the, the 24 karat question is, what's the measuring stick? How do you know if it's green? How is it eligible? That's, uh, that's of course, uh, the biggest challenge. First of all, we have to make sure that uh, we are avoiding greenwashing. Greenwashing means uh, we just say this is a green bond and we sell it as a green My bond. My personal jet is, is, is a green investment. It consumes less fuel than the last jet, therefore, right? Especially right? from London to Paris. No? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm going to fly to Luxembourg from now on. So. Okay, even better. Even no, but better. I, I, seriously, yeah. I mean, there's, there's yeah. a lot of concern out there that exactly. uh, this is being But this, what you described is a lot of concern based on my experience. Wall Street bankers can turn on a dime. There's a lot of greenwashing coming out of New York. Yeah, but, you know, but it's, it's all creating this virtuous cycle. A, a you, there has to be a technology or some project which is going to actually have an environmental uh, impact. New and renewable uh, sources of energy. Uh, and then uh, you have to have the transitional finance to get it up and running. And then this is takeout finance. This is the long term. How, how long a term are we talking about? We're we talking about bonds that last for 30 years, 40 years, 10 years. Oh, yes, I would, I would say we are going on, on the longer term, meaning at least 20 years, 30 years, uh, depending on, on the different projects they are, they are financing. But uh, you are very right. I mean, it's all about uh, having common criteria. That's what we call the so-called uh, taxonomy. 
meaning that uh, we all have a common understanding of what we mean by green and which kind of categories fall, uh, economic activities fall within these different uh, green shades, if I may say so. So there are dark green uh, bonds, <laughs> there are green bonds, and so on. And um, how about a white bond? I, I, I have some <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a different story. <laughs> there's a there's a very interesting aspect from what Ambassador said about how investment banks who in, in Luxembourg also got into the green side. What I've found is investment banks see another opportunity. They have high net worth individuals, wealth management. Increasingly, high net worth individuals, those interested in green, are allocating portions of their own portfolio into green. So the investment banks need products to sell. There's not much, they're not originating because uh, some, some bank can't just declare this is a green bond, right? That's the biggest issue today in, in China as well. The standards by which you measure is greenness. Yes. There's no international standard. There's no. How did, you, how did Luxembourg come up with a standard that says, okay, this is the one that's uh, good for us and the European Union? Uh, we are way too small uh, for that, for, for being a standard setter in that, in that regard. But what is e even more important is there is a very um, rich and ongoing cooperation between the European Union and China in this regard. So uh, no later than at the end of uh, last year, both sides, meaning the European Union and China, decided on a so-called common ground uh, for taxonomy, meaning we have established each one on uh, its side, a catalog of activities that we are considering to be green. So uh, to, to simplify, if there's a green technology out there that is acceptable to the EU and China, etc., and they say, yes, this would be eligible for takeout long-term green bond financing, that's what's going to really push it over the line. Because then when I'm, I'm estimating, oh, what is this going to cost and what's going to my return and my things like this, I, I really know to, need to know my financing costs. So in, in advance, so the people who are selling the technology are in fact going to be making make money and they're going to be paying wages and this is part of the multiplier. So it's not exactly, uh, from what I'm hearing from you, it's not exactly like, oh, we're just giving away money <laughs> as long as you say it's Not at all. No. <laughs> not at all.